this, this 1 over y. Um, so that, what is that? Well, it's 1, whatever this is, your f will invert it 1 over whatever this is. But what it, this, this is 1 over y. So 1 over 1 over y is just y. Right? So that works. So this, this 1 over y is, is your a. That's your solution. So for, uh, for whatever y here, you'll get an a. And what is your a? Well, it's 1 over that. Right? And that works. OK, so it's, uh, it's surjective. Right? Every, every element of your codomain is mapped to, it's the definition of surjective or onto. OK, so okay, that's done. All right. And last one. Uh, it's question 11 in the, so you're given, you know, I have space. <laughs> okay. I'll put it here. Uh, oh, by the way, I will definitely be buying a new board, uh, probably a whiteboard, because uh, my Chinese wife uh, objects to the idea of using chalk because there'd be too much dust around. It's not, not healthy, because if I'm doing this, almost every night, uh, there'll be a lot of chalk dust in here. So I'll just, uh, I'll just get a bigger board, whiteboard, you know, higher quality, so I don't get this problem. I mean, the, the thinness of the surface of this is uh, extreme, so it rubbed off very easily, and underneath is not white, it's uh, silver, which is really stupid, so low, low quality product. So I'll, I'll be buying a better one, higher quality, and uh, bigger. So I can, I can then write bigger, so it's probably easier to see. See, my original idea was to use high definition, because you know, it's nicer. But the trouble is, you know, as you can guess, was the upload uh, time to YouTube. So if I made a 10 minute clip in high D, sending it from China, it would take, well I tried, it took about all, almost all day. Right? So it was just crazy. So I was forced to uh, lower the resolution. So I went from high D to standard. And so one of the disadvantages of standard resolution is sometimes if these letters are a bit small, you, you can't make them out. So with a bigger board, I can afford to write bigger letters. So that's another, another plus. All right. Okay, so question 11. Um, you're given a group, G, right? So a special kind of set. So we've got a group, uh, little g be, is any element belonging to it, okay. little g is, is, is a, t uh, a random group element, and your function is mapping this g to g, okay. so in this case your, your set is a group, okay. so a group is just a special kind of set, still a set, okay. a group is a set. So your mapping elements of the group, this group G, uh, into elements of the group G, okay? And you're given that your f of x is equal to G x, sorry, x G, okay? And you're asked to prove that that mapping, you know, with these two sets, well, one set, <laughs> you're mapping it from itself into itself, um, you're asked to prove that this mapping F here is a bijection. Right? So you have to do two things. You have to prove that it's injective and surjective, or other, that it's an into function and a onto function. So how, how to do that? So we have, we have to prove the two cases. All right, so, if, so how, how to prove that it's injective? Okay, so again, um, in this case, so uh, so let's let's so, so so we'll just take two random members of G here, and uh, again, you know, so so we'll use this strategy, you know, proving injection. So uh, f of a in this case will be equal to a G, okay, A G, and F of B will be just B G, B G, okay. 
and assume they're equal, right? So this equals that, and therefore AG equals uh, BG. Now these are group elements, right? Group elements. And if it's a group, every element has an inverse, and it's the same, same element here, GG. So if I post multiply on the right hand side by the inverse of G, so I'll get AG, AG, uh, sorry, AG, G inverse equals B, G, G inverse. And that just leaves you, well, that's, that's the unit element, E, right, from earlier lectures. So you get AE equals BE. That's the unit element. That's an E there. So A equals B. All right? That, that, uh, that proves inject, injective. So it's injective. All right? Uh, now how about uh, uh, proving surject, that it's surjective? How to do that? So we have to find a solution. Okay, so uh, I need, a, I need a space. So let, let that be some uh, random element of your codomain. What's well, what's G actually? Okay? okay, G and G. So. Uh, we have, we have. Yeah, this is a random element, right, from uh, from your codomain, and we have to find something that maps to to y. And we know that f is of this form x x of g. Well, uh, can you see if if I let my x the uh, whatever whatever y is if I if I if I do this can you see that that would work so wh whatever y is um, I choose I choose I choose a value here that's equal to this that it's y g inverse now why you know where that come from why why did I do that well, because if I now do f of x, watch what happens. Now, what is f of x? Well, it's xg. It's xg. But what is x? Well, I've, I'm postulating, I'm suggesting that it's y g inverse g. Now, g inverse g is just e, so this is y e, and that's just y. So I've got it. So if, if x is y g inverse, uh, I get y. I get y here. But this y is random. It's any element of your g. So this x is so the y is quite general. So the x is quite general. So for each y, I have an x here that maps onto it. Right? Therefore, every element, you know, every y, every element of the codomain gets mapped to. Therefore, this codomain is, uh, you know, every element gets mapped to, therefore this function is surjective. Okay, so it's surjective. So that's true, and it's, now if it's both injective and surjective, therefore it is bijective. So we've, we've proved it. Okay, so I'll uh, stop the problem solving part here. And then now, now that you've got a fair taste of uh, proving injective and su subjective and bijective, uh, now I'll, the last page or so of some theorems, there's two, two theorems, um, you will understand them more readily because you've got, you've got this under your belt now. Okay, so I'll stop here temporarily.